Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa's Paradise and this is my husband Jim and uh, we have a little story to tell you about where we've been and I'm going to let Jim take it over because he's better at explaining all this stuff. Well I guess uh, if anybody has been following Lisa's channel they knew uh, we started off the new year on a rough note. Um, we had a visitor uh, on New Year's Eve come into the house and uh, I had to hold him off at gunpoint, a legally purchased gun by the way, um, and this will come into play, this uh, scenario of him coming in and me holding him at gunpoint for 20 minutes, or more than 20 minutes, right. until the Columbus police actually came and uh, wrestled him down to the ground and handcuffed. But that, like I said, this will come into play and actually come in to bite us in the butt, believe it or not. Um, and, you know, on, on down to the story. But it's just an incredible uh, tale of, uh, um, it's an unbelievable tale, actually, of what we have gone through. And we basically uh, have lost everything. Um, my employment, um, our home. We literally have just less than a week to remain in, in the home and really uh, uncertain where we will go. But we're going to let, uh, it's probably going to take a few parts to this story um, to explain it. But I believe me, trust me, um, you will think twice about every move you make on social media, any unknown phone call, unknown text message, uh, anybody that you don't know coming into your house or that you don't know in depth about, you will think twice. You will look at everybody differently. Um, but one thing I do want to emphasize, though, is I do have, still have great respect for the police. Absolutely. Um, it is uh, the judicial system. I question um, and how they do things so how do we want to begin go ahead um... all right well we had our little visitor on New Year's Eve and uh, it was uh, what just a few weeks later yes about well actually about a, it was a few a couple weeks later uh, we happened to notice in our security cameras because we have security cameras all around the house uh, we weren't home at the time, but there were police surrounding our house. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know, they must be coming to ask me more questions about the person who invaded our home invasion or the house. So I called them and uh, they said, no, uh, we are there for a female. Uh, of course, the only female in the house is my wife Lisa. They had an address warrant for her. So we did what anybody uh, would do. Basically panicked. Like what yeah. the heck? So we got hold of an attorney and he's the attorney basically said you know we, we left the county uh, for a few days and lived in a, in a hotel until we could. And the reason why we did that was because the attorney said until we investigated it more and knew what was going on for us to leave the house. So once we got to the hotel, I started investigating things that they said was evidence against me. Um, and so... You were being falsely accused of intimidating or threatening a person with a gun, and they also used the what menacing to, threats, menacing threat, what? and also the to uh, shoot harm law enforcement. Yes, that's why the police came out in force. Is the threat was made against, I believe, a police, police officer. officers also. Yeah. So we did what the attorney said. He didn't believe anything we said. No. 
he didn't believe that we were innocent. He was an absolute horrible attorney after we gave him $1,500, which we never got back. He never he, did anything. He didn't do anything. So we ended up having to hire another attorney. We went to Delaware County, Ohio here, Delaware County, Ohio, where the uh, arrest warrant was from. She went in and before went before the judge. And of course, I was not allowed to go in. It was just Lisa and her attorney. And is that when the the judge basically said you were a threat because of, I had the firearm in the house? Yeah. Use that as a because I used the firearm to defend us. Uh, to hold somebody at bay until police arrived, use that fact to basically say we were she was guilty because she was a violent person because we do have a fi legally owned firearm. And basically how they found this out, they had researched me and looked up my YouTube channel and seen the, the video that I had posted about the invasion and where Jim had to... Um, hold the guy at gunpoint. They just assumed, okay, they have a gun, so obviously they're used to using it. So this, she must be guilty. Oh, uh, anyway, we. And I also, when I was there, I was getting um, the warrant set aside because there was a warrant out for me. So the judge basically told me, flat out, before anything was even said. You're either going to jail today or you're getting the ankle bracelet on like a GPS that tracks your every move. And if you don't have the ankle bracelet on today, you stay in jail. So she was throwing the book at me. She was done. So, of course, I was scared. And they put the GPS on me and then I got to go home. So. But I was after we had to pay. Oh, cost. yeah. Oh, yeah. 150 oh, Yeah. And it's $9 a day to monitor. Okay, and uh, so, by the way, we had to pay how many thousands of dollars to that, three thousand dollars to that attorney? Mm -hmm. uh, Just for her to take the case. Yeah, on top of the 1500 we'd already lost with the other attorney who just basically sat there and did nothing. But, uh, so we walked out of there, um, we had went, what was it, about a week later? We went to, um, um, we had gone uh, to Port Clinton to basically, well, to look at a couple of mobile homes um, to get away and try to just put this in the past and try to figure out what was going on. But uh, we got back on, what was it, a Sunday? It was the 5th. No, it was the 6th on a Saturday. Okay. We, we got back. Um, we had picked up her mother, who was living with us at the time. And we went to Walmart. We went to, actually, to the car wash. And uh, I washed the car. Mm. And I got back, and uh, they said that the police were at the house again. Um they came in force this time. So we came they came back to the house and they were gone, but then they came back with a SWAT team came came in. The SWAT team came um, and beat on the door. We were in the house, scared to death, uh, didn't know what to do. We thought all this was behind us, you know. And her pro Probation, probation officer who, uh, who monitors the ankle, ankle monitor called me on the phone called my phone and I answered and they said is Lisa there and of course you know, I said well she wasn't at the time she wasn't in the room with me she was in the house but she wasn't in the room with me uh, so I technically didn't lie but uh, she said she needed to get up to Delaware County that there was a problem or with something. my ankle bracelet yeah and uh when I, I arrived, I, well, when I knew 
that if that was just a ruse to get us to come up there and I said about getting safe passage up there, tell her that the police were here. Of course, they asked why I didn't answer. I don't even know whether I answered or not. But uh, she said that uh, as long as I took her up there so they could check the ankle monitor, everything would be fine. Well, I knew that that wasn't it. You don't send the SWAT team to have somebody check an ankle monitor. So as soon as we got up there, um, if, if you know Lisa, her, she's a very petite, uh, and you get all these, what was there, three or four sheriff's deputies came out. They told me to go into the, the courtroom or into the lobby mm -hmm. and pick up a black phone and she would come out. And as soon as she did, they were swarmed. They swarmed me and I lost it. Yeah. And away she went. And then she started her ordeal in jail at that time. Um, and that was the beginning of the ordeal for actually us, the beginning of the end basically of our, our uh, dream home and dream life. Uh, and it was, of course, going around trying to scrounge up money because if you ever had to have an attorney, it's all about money. Money, money, money. Yeah, I need so many thousands to do this, and they don't lift up an inkstand until they have cash in hand. So I'm scrounging up every bit of money I can find. Uh, and this is where family is, uh, and I'll bring this up, but you want me to? Uh, it's fine. Family is a, a, a funny thing, you know. Um, ones who are well off, who can um, help, and when I mean family, I mean kids. You have kids. I, I had called her son, and uh, just not not to give, but just to loan money so I could get her out. Uh, I know we'll forget his response as he he kind of give off a little chuckle and said uh, that's what they pay public defenders for. And that was the extent of the help that her son uh, chose to give. And keep, keep this in mind about him, because on down this story, maybe in the next, because it's going to be a multi-part yeah. story, um, on down the line, uh, it comes up where karma is, quote, a B-I-T itch, and it comes on him. But that's on, on down the story. But anyway, um, unfortunately, my best friend is sitting in jail, and uh, Lisa will attest to this. I... It takes all my wit to know how to do a cell, use a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So trying to set up all the complicated stuff to get money to her in jail, to get money to call, talk to her, which, by the way, is another um, government money-making money scheme. Oh, my gosh. It is a horrible thing. Put it this way. For every dollar you put on somebody's account, I would say 50 cents of that goes to the government yeah. or to the company that that provides that service. It's just like the ankle monitors. It's a, a not a government thing, but it's a company that... So yeah. everything's money-making. But uh, where did I leave? Oh, you, you were in jail. I'm scrambling around trying to get parts in here, parts, <laughs> trying to scrounge up money and learn how to do all this stuff. Dealing with her mom, uh, and I'm sure she's not going to like this very well either, who was a handful, um, trying to work. Uh, you remember the inauguration and the trouble that was happening. I was actually, they shut the downtown, but I would volunteer to go in and work around helping the highway patrol take care of their needs and stuff. But, um, uh, where was I at? Oh, thinking back about her first son, Doug, how he basically got thrown in jail for basically the same thing uh, just a month before. Yeah. How he got out, and then a week later, he got thrown in jail again. 
but um, the same thing with Lisa. She got arrested, got the ankle monitor a week later, she got put in jail. So you got her son, you got son, you got mother. I knew they I were was, going to come for I him. knew I was going to be the next in line. I done did nothing. I did nothing. I, but I just had that feeling. And what was it? Uh, two weeks three later? weeks. Three weeks. Because I was under five weeks. Okay. Yeah. About three weeks later, on a Saturday. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Saturday. Went to Saturday, the attorney's Saturday, office. Saturday, yeah. Saturday, February thirteenth. Uh, yeah. Day before Valentine's Day. Sure enough, knock on the door, look, and on the security camera, and there were the police. And uh, he, they picked him up, saying he had threatened prosecutor. the prosecutor mm -hmm. because um, because you were in jail because I was in jail. So he, they came and said that he was threatening the prosecutor and was telling them if he would let me out of jail, they he wouldn't hurt him, and then. They handcuffed him and took him to jail. Yeah, they handcuffed me. I think they got me about 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I got made it to Delaware County, which mind you is what, 30 miles away? Yeah. It took them four hours and three different transfers to three different police cruisers to get me there. That means you get out, you get searched, you get handcuffed, handcuffed, unhandcuffed each each time. So if uh, if you post those mug shots, that's why I I look as bad as I do. Yeah. Um, it was not a fun trip, but I got up to Delaware County. I was not. Uh, um, we had had COVID, obviously. That's you had told that in a previous. Yeah. But we had COVID back in uh, October, March. Uh, October. No, October. Yeah. Yeah. We had it in October, and if anybody who's had COVID, they know that. Uh, uh, a known effect is what they call COVID brain. Yeah. It sounds funny, but yeah, it's where, and I and I've had ver verified by a doctor just last yeah. uh, nurses last week that who had it said, yeah, it's it has to do when you get stressed mm -hmm. and breathing. Right. Um, you know that's what she told me because it happens to her, the nurse. But uh, I was just stressed and but I don't <clears throat> wasn't read my rights. I was put in solitary confinement uh, for. Almost the end. Well, yeah, the entire stay. I was there for two weeks. He um, got out the same day. He got to go into, like, the public Yeah. Well, one day, right? Uh, 22 hours. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, well, anyway, I was, the reason that they said I was put in there is uh, I have bad hernias. Um, but I was not uh, read my Miranda rights um, until four days after when... Detectives, investigators came in and took me into another room, and then they read me my rights. But I was put in solitary confinement. I was not able, with no no phone numbers, nothing. I mean, if anybody, if you think about it, how many phone numbers do you really know off the top of your yeah. head? Important. Most of them are on your cell phone. I had no cell phone. Yeah. I was not able to call my employer, Arc Industries of Franklin County, Ohio. Uh, work with developmentally disabled adults um, so that's three days I, three, no. day, three days they said no call no show they terminated me um, but that's we'll get into that right on down like I said this is that's, this is an just the first story. part yeah but anyway three days um, I was in there and nobody really knew where I was uh, finally, you know, my daughter, Sabrina, um, I was able to get hold of her, or she called. I think she figured it out, and uh, uh, I owe her a lot. Of, um, I mean, she did a, more than anybody in my entire family did. That's where family would, you know, they're, they're there, they're there until you need them Something to be happens. there, and then they're not there anymore. And all you guys know, we have tons of animals. Our our fur babies and our turtles and that are our babies. And we had nobody to care for them. And that's what was tearing us up because we had nobody. Yeah, and uh, I'm not the, uh, 
I went, uh, when I got in there, that was all I could think about was, you know, what am I going to do? Her mom was bailed on us, basically. She had told me just a day or two before she was going to move back with her son. Say why? I, why? She did not want to give up her cell phone. The attorney took said that we needed to turn in all the cell phones and all the electronic devices that were in the house, which I more than willingly did. We definitely she did. said nobody was taking her cell phone for any reason. So basically she was just saying that Lisa could rot in jail before they got her phone. You know, they weren't she wasn't gonna give it up, so she left. Um, and that was after we had did a lot of remodeling to the her house, room. yeah, for, for her because she was not able to get them down the steps. So we actually added a wall, and a lot of you guys that follow me, you know, you know how much we had been doing. I know this video is going to upset a whole lot of people, but you know, it's life. And I have to say, my daughter, that I had been pretty much estranged from for a while, she actually stepped in and, and came through and helped me through a lot of this, her and her boyfriend. So I appreciate everything they've done. I mean, there was, there was some hiccups. There was some, because- Miscommunication. Miscommunication. And there's, it was inevitable because of the, the situation. My, I would have almost constant COVID brain. I almost had, it was solitary confinement. You're in, in a jail cell for 23 hours every day. You get out one hour, uh, literally to take a shower and to walk just a small corridor. So really, you're only out for about 15 minutes because it doesn't do any good. You know, we walk back and forth. That's it. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and the miscommunication was my fault when I think about it. But anyway. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I chose, uh, was so devastated, worrying about our pets and thinking, you know, they're, they're going to start. So I chose not to eat. And I think I went uh, four or five days. I lost. Uh, was it 20 something pounds? I, well, yeah, I, I was at 260 yeah. pounds and I dropped down to like 230. Yeah. Uh, I was I was a, a real mess, uh, and that affects you mentally. Um, I'm, sad. I'm still down in weight a lot, right? But uh, sure enough, I, they uh, when I went before the judge, uh, the same one that Lisa same went one. before, uh, she looked at me, and her first words was, uh, "She said, I don't understand why this is a misdemeanor. This should be a felony." You have guns in the house. Your video shows you with a gun, point a gun at somebody, meaning the video of holding off the the uh, intruder into my my home, defending my home until the police arrived, and then before the police came in, doing the right thing, giving the firearm to Lisa to secure it before the police walked through the door for their safety and for ours. But she looked at me with contempt uh, for doing such a thing. Uh, that obviously because I'm a gun owner, I'm a I'm a radical, I'm a violent person. Yeah. Of course, my bail was set at fifty thousand dollars. And mine was also. Um, there's no way, you know, anybody could, you know, would I would want anybody to do no because we knew that know the pattern. Post bail, a week Get later, out. they they week later they come pick you up to lose that money. Right. Her son saying about the public defender, let them handle it. That's what the job's for. Well, it wasn't just him. It was my family, too. Uh, quote, unquote here, uh, maybe you'll be lucky and get somebody out of, out of fresh out of law school who wants to make a name for themselves to defend you. Well, that's not how it works. I know. My public defender was somebody who was just handed a case while standing there, never talking to me whatsoever. And just standing there while the judge imposed the fifty thousand dollar bail. That's that's not that's not how you defend anybody. I'm, I guess I can see why the jails and prisons are overcrowded. Oh, yeah. It's because a lot of those people had 
did not have proper representation. They could not afford an attorney. Um, investigators see the easy way out. They, they see, okay, yeah, somebody accused you. You don't have an alibi or anything like that. So it's automatically, you know, case closed, they're in jail. And the one and, thing too is they said they had all this evidence the person who accused or the the person who accused us uh, of doing of this uh, said they had all this evidence, boatload of evidence against us. Uh, the second attorney Lisa had uh, actually got said there was a car. We had an idea who could possibly who we thought may be involved in this. So I actually went in and at great risk, multiple times, drove around looking for this car. But in a bad area. In a very bad area. But anyway, yeah, that didn't pan out. Maybe it maybe it will in the future. Right. I don't know. But anyway, that was um but and all we, of, and we also the thing is we had evidence where we were at. Yes, we had evidence. We I showed, gave it to the attorney. Well, the person, the probation officer, when they took her into custody, even said, we tracked you. You went to Marblehead, uh, Lake Erie, put, uh, Portland, Marblehead. She tracked every move we made. She said, you were not anyways, anywhere near the, the, the circle, the no-go zone. But they still said but I they, was there. But they still said she was there, and they still arrested her. Mm -hmm. But this is how messed up the system is. This is. And this is just by somebody accusing, saying something. Hey, you you threatened my life. They can put you in jail. They can put you in the jail. The first attorney told me, I said, is it really this easy for somebody to accuse you and put you in jail? And he said, yeah, I could go upstairs and say in the courtroom that you hit me in the elevator. And he said, even if there wasn't any cameras, they'd still come and get you. Because it's your word against mine. Supposedly, this was is a, something totally new that they're using a, a spoofing. A spoofing app. Spoofing app. That changes, it could actually use your number and it can um, change your voice. So you can change it to a woman, you can change it to a man, you can change it to however you want it. And then you call, call somebody and you threaten them and basically... For me, they used my name and they got my name from Facebook because my name on Facebook is Lisa Marie Slentz. So when they called and threatened this woman and the police officer on the phone, they said, this is Lisa Marie Slentz. So that's all the evidence they had was my name because they didn't use my phone number and they automatically came and put me in jail. And I served five weeks and you served three. Two. Two, two. two weeks. And um, you want to talk about the guy? And then we can do another video of about, how everything. About the guy. Which the you... guy that did this. So basically our identity was stolen. Yeah. Basically, yeah, our, our identity was stolen. We don't know why. Um, it has. Us. It, well, it could have something to do with Lisa's My son. son. Mm -hmm. Her son, who was in jail and everything, and a lot he, of you, he had brought he okay. had brought somebody here to the house one time to help move a very heavy treadmill up, and uh, so he knew where we lived, who we were, and the person who said that Lisa was threatening was her oldest son's former boss. So that's where that comes into play. Uh, I'm trying to think, trying to connect all the dots here. It's really kind of tough uh, because it's such an unbelievable story. But basically so far they, they've gotten her son in jail. They have Lisa in jail. They have you. myself in jail. So this person who is doing all of this uh, goes to the next step, which is my son, Corey, the one who 
laughed, uh, gave the, the uh, very annoying uh, little chuckle about the public defender. Well, they went after him. And then, of course, he cried and he won't run into his daddy. Uh, you know, oh, what am I going to do? Poor me, they're coming after me. You know, so just, basically, this guy called and threatened the judge and said it was my son, Corey, said that he was going to kill the judge if they didn't let me out. So that brought in the FBI. That brought in the big the people who actually get the job done and right. and I we don't have the, the car uh, the, the oh detective, the detective but we but do there, want to mention him but there is a detective yeah. who stayed on this and and be, believed us and and he worked and he got us uh, well basically clear he the, as much as he could anyway the detectives came in at midnight when I was in jail and had me listen to recordings and asked if it was my son. And I was like, no, but it sounds like somebody I know. And it was actually, it sounded like the boy that had been at the house with my son. And that's where And that's was. when, yeah, and so they know us. So that's when I said, okay, that's him. And that's his worked, voice. And he also worked with Doug. And he also worked with my oldest son. And those of you that follow me know my son's always had um, addiction issues and he's been in and out of treatment he's had a lot of health problems he's been in and out of jail and so now it's like okay so the FBI comes in and they actually crack open the case and was it really the FBI or was it the, no it was, was the it investigator was, it was the investigator yeah he worked but anyway diligently it, it, on if, everything. It, if it hadn't been for threatening the judge we would still be in there. Uh, we would there. probably still be in there. And if it would have been up to the judge we went before, we would have been... In prison. Uh, we're, well, no, we would have been sitting in jail. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the uh, the damage was done because uh, I'd lost my job. Uh, we lost the house. We had to sell the house on a quick sale. That's why it's empty. This was our dream house. Uh, we worked hard. And this, this blind side of this. In an instant, it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. And through no fault of our own, I'm not saying, uh, you know, we were, we try to be law abiding citizens. I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Some rare occasion I may drive over the speed limit, but never anything uh, to it's warrant awesome. to warrant this this sort of. Uh, uh, treatment treatment of course you know my job is gone it's gone um, I they said I could always apply for it and start at the low end of the totem pole again I had over 10 years there I had senior seniority uh, and you had I, a special um, yeah I were actually worked down at the uh, the state house um, the state office towers uh, you know it would be not be uncommon for me to be on the governor's floor having to do work. Um, I was all over those buildings. Um, but that didn't matter. My, my security clearance was gone. Uh, you know, just everything. And then having to sell the house on a quick sale. And then everything has just been a total, total nightmare. Every step forward. Uh, again, this is where family comes in. Uh, just trying to get things out of the house. Everybody is said, "Oh yeah, we're there. We'll help you move. We'll help you move." Um, uh, that's why I have multiple hernias now because everybody was here to help me move, and I can barely move around yeah. anymore because I'm I'm so in so much pain. Yeah. Um, and the deadline's closing in, and almost everything's gone, which is. Good. We sold everything that we could. I mean, if somebody offered us any amount for right, anything, we took, it. We, we took it. We lost money. We'll never get back nearly what any way close to what we lost. Um, tried filing for unemployment. That's a that's a hopeless cause. Yeah, it's been forever. Which reminds me, I need to do your yeah. uh, thing today. Yeah. Um, I mean, I you know don't really know what. What else to say? I mean, there's still a lot more details, and 
if you have any questions about anything we've talked about so far, uh, if you reach out to Lisa, we'll probably try to do, do another video yeah. next week, next weekend. Um, but so far that's, that's where we're at. Again, I still have the great respect for law enforcement. They put up with a lot of stuff. They do. I've seen firsthand the riots in Columbus at three in the morning, how restrained and how disciplined and the police were, and they've get, gotten nothing but a very, very bad rap, bad rap. From, yeah. from the governor, or not the governor, but the mayor. Right. Um, but anyway, my, my hat's off to the police. Um, that's about all I can really think of now, but there's so, a lot more. Yeah, so basically the guy that did this, he stole our identity, but he was also doing other things, and he was... He was a um, ex correctional officer where we were actually where incarcerated. we were incarcerated. He actually quit his job the week or around the time that I got out of jail. So he knew we were there. So he, he may have knew. even watched. And us. the thing was, when I seen it on the news um, and seen his picture, it was like I told Jim. I said he looks so familiar. So I feel like we probably seen him in jail, but he he worked there. And he was calling and threatening the judge and all this stuff and um, blaming it on us. And then when they went to his house to um, to search it, they found guns and they found a homemade bomb in his house. So we're not sure what he was else, you know, what else he was planning on doing, but he was doing some bad stuff. And the other thing he was on the news about, which I'll link it. Um, if anybody's interested in reading more about him, he was, him and this other boy was dumping um, construction debris yeah. in a neighborhood. Yeah, I suggest you don't mention their name, but right. you, can, you can lead them to the link. Yeah. And then the people, if they're interested, uh, you can look them up and you can see who we're talking about. Right. And um, you can figure out how what a bad person this this guy is. Yeah. So we're still in this. We're still like I my attorneys actually have started a case against him and against the app, the spoofing app, because somebody needs to be held res responsible because these apps, what what's happening is they can grab a number, they can use that number for a phone call. Then it goes back into a pool of numbers, somebody else gets that number, so it's hard to track it. So they're going after the app, the, the company that made the app also to try to, to maybe get something in place so this doesn't happen again. It's um, almost like spam calls. You never know who's calling. It's just you. a random pool of numbers. They pull a number out they call, and they use that number to call people. You know, like I said, it's just like a spam it's call. It's for harassing. Why would you need an app to change your, your voice, your number, or anything? Obviously, it's for no good. And I never heard about spoofing until the first day I walked in that courtroom and the attorney looked at me and said, oh, so you're spoofing people. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then they explained it to me. In all fairness, your son, the... Yeah. He had that app on his He phone. had, yeah, when he went to jail... They actually, his attorney found an app on his phone for that. But the, oh. this is the other thing. They do use those apps for calling if they can't get service. Like they can call out on an app without having uh, Wi-Fi, or they have to have Wi-Fi connection, I think it is. But they don't have to have data. So, yeah. But we're at the point now, we have a week left in the house, which we're sleeping on the floor. Um... We have everything in storage. We have two storage units filled up with what we had left of everything in our house. And um, we Lost did. Car. He, yeah, his car. We had to basically put his car on the lot for sale. Um, we bought a mobile home and it was supposed to be delivered last week and put in because right now we're having to pay $500 a week to live in our house. Um, because we sold it on quick sale, but um, we're praying that this week they get our mobile home set up. Um, we were able to pay cash for it, so nobody can take it away except for the IRS. The IRS. <laughs> Let's hope they don't come and take it, but um, 
Yeah, so it it's been it's been really rough. I'm having I'm having a harder time. Well, I can't say that now because you've been having a hard time just being at home. I've been going and helping my daughter with the grandkids. He stays here with the animals. And so he has to live still in this. I get to go away and kind of clear my mind, but so I'm living in an empty shell. What was our dream house, basically? Yeah. A house that we worked hard to make the way we wanted each room from the studio slash craft room to my office slash car room. Uh, just empty now and just nothing but uh, memories that each and every day that uh, as I walk through these rooms. That haunt you. That haunt me. Uh, of a dream that once was, but was basically stolen away through no fault of my own, basically blindsided me. I, I didn't see it coming. We didn't see it coming. The one thing I can say through this whole thing that has been the best thing that came out of this was I my relationship with God got closer. And when I was in jail, I actually helped other women. I had like, I did like Bible study I would read to the girls because a lot of them didn't know how to read or write. So I would help them. And I'll tell you more about that later. Jim actually had a tore up Bible that had half of the Bible gone. And he became close to God because before that he didn't have a relationship. Well, when you're studying 23 and a half hours, basically every day, no TV, no radio and, and just solitude. You hear the, the the yelling and screaming of, of people every now and then. You know, it took me, well. It did take me four days for them to even give me give me anything, and it was just basically a ripped up old Bible. Um, my, of course, my my prayer from the beginning was to that Lisa was safe and that the animals were were safe. And and like I said, my my deranged thought was. If they're starving to death, there's I have no reason to eat. Uh, if they if they're starving, it wouldn't be right. I I know anybody who's not a pet owner or a pet lover wouldn't, you wouldn't understand. understand. Well, they wouldn't understand. But we have such a close bond with our our uh, our pets. Uh, we don't refer to them as pets. They're they're our family. When I the it was on the fourteenth. Um, no, it was on 13th. I called home expecting to talk to him and his daughter answered the phone and my heart sunk and she said they took him. And, and then I started, I tried to be positive about everything and I, I tried my best, but like four, about four o'clock in the morning um, on Valentine's Day, I had a breakdown and they had to take me out of there for about three hours because I worried about the animals so much. I do want to, and and please don't be offended, I do want to uh, not only thank my daughter, Sabrina, but um, I want to thank my, my ex-wife. Uh, she actually uh, paid for the attorney who helped. Um, I want to thank her for that. Uh, she, that was something you don't think an ex-spouse would do. Um, and if you ever know, we never really had, a, you know, we were exes. We yeah. never really associated or anything. It wasn't like we were friends or even, but she still stepped up. Sabrina yep. mentioned to her and about needing an attorney, and she, she stepped up with the money. And I want to thank her for that. Yeah. So <sighs> we will uh, end this video. I know it's kind of long. Um, we want to get this out we're not we're kind of vague on on names and stuff and that's for a reason uh lisa will guide you to the app or to the app to the uh, links to right. find out who basically we are talking about uh, without us actually mentioning names so i want to thank because you. it's ongoing basically yes, it's, it's and ongoing. he is in jail he's looking at 10 years in prison well yeah we don't know anymore but We'll see. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And um, uh, if you ever watched some of the videos, you know, uh, normally we're laughing and having a good yeah, time. This try. is probably a uh, 
uh, you probably don't recognize me being so not jolly. I guess. Sober, like it's just like somber. Somber, oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, hopefully, uh, well, we know things will things won't be the same as they they were. Uh, but um, you know, we'll uh, as long as we're together, uh, we'll make the best of what we got left. Yeah. Um, but like I said, be very, very careful of uh, anybody who text messages you, who who calls you, who sends you anything on your computer that you don't recognize. And this is that, more common than what you think, you guys. Uh, it, it can it can happen to anybody, and um, I mean. Your 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 social security number, your name could be out there even as we're talking, and it just hasn't been used yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it might not be used to this extent that destroyed us, but it could be used in other ways. So be very careful. Screen your phone calls. Put a put a message on your on your cell phone saying, uh, "Due to you know." I screen all my calls. If right. you want to talk to me, leave your name and number, if I, and I will return your call right. if you don't recognize the number. But just please take every, every precaution. precaution you can. And nobody's going to think any less of you of it. Uh, and if they do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, it's one thing we realized a lot of things don't matter. But I mean, oh, I do want to say one thing. Uh, her daughter, Kayla, and I, we. We did not get along. Uh, I held a grudge against her from another previous uh, incident, uh, incident. Or and and, uh, and she held a grudge against me. But uh, all this came about. I got to see her step up in a totally different side to her that I never saw before, and I believe she has seen a side to me that that um, she definitely. had never seen. Um, and we, our relationship has been good. It's been really good. It's been good for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a rough time there for a while. Yeah. But in the last few years, it's, it's gotten stronger and stronger. And then this uh, has made us even stronger. It's, it's still rough, though. Oh, it is. It so, is. But... Anyway. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys all have a great week, and um, we will be updating more soon as we can have time, <laughs> but I love you guys, and like I said, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Bye.